Welcome to a new video about BGT differential amplifiers. This is our example number four, where we use the BGTs again in differential pair format, but then we will use the Wilson current source for our current source realization. Of course, we'll work out everything in the calculations step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our example. We have the following circuit. As said before, we have a differential pair with the BGTs. Differential pair is formed by Q1 and Q2. And we have here the source current, which is our Wilson current source formed by Q3, Q4, and Q5. Q1 and Q2 are matched. That's actually given by this expression. And Q3, Q4, and Q5 are matched. That means actually the following. The Q1 and Q2 will have the same physical dimensions and the beta and also the early voltage, in this case infinite. And that is for Q3, Q4 and Q5 also the case. In this case, it's 60 volts as the early voltages. For all transistors, the beta is 150 and also the base to emitter voltage is assumed to be 0.7 volts. In addition, we have the RM here, which is the, in order to create this tail current, I mean the reference current, IM, the tail current is IX. And the RC here is for this differential pairs to create that gain. And also we have two power supplies, VCC and uh, VE, given here as 20 and minus 20 volts. So what we would like to calculate is the balanced differential mode voltage gain, the balanced common mode voltage gain, and again, the common mode, uh, the rejection ratio, the balanced format. So we need to use A and B for question C. So let's look at our calculations, just the first step. Before we move on, let's designate here the current that's already given, but uh, to make it more clear, this is the IM, which is our reference current. And that will be then analyzed here, and we will like to calculate now the IM. Now, we set up here from the ground all the way to the VEE, we set the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So we make a loop, we say the voltage across RM, which is just Ohm's law, plus this VBE5 and VBE4 and VEE. That's all shown here. Now, in order to calculate the IM here, we just uh, rewrite the equation like that. So we bring all the voltages to the right side, divide by RM. Now, when you substitute the values from this circuit, we get now here 2.015 milliamps. Okay. Now, looking at the Wilson current source, Q3, Q4, and Q5, we need to also use that. And there is an expression for the reference current to the tail current. And that's given by this expression, where you also consider the early voltages. If you have an infinite early voltage for Q3, Q4, and Q5, then this term will be zero because you divide by an infinite. And this term will be also zero because you divide by infinite. It means actually you get now one over one plus two over beta times beta two plus two. And that was the ideal situation where you assume that the early voltages are infinite. In this case, we take into account the early voltages and this expression can be derived as a quite lengthy and tedious analysis. So you get some messy uh, expression so I will just leave the details out this is the expression I will use for the analysis in order to calculate the IX we know I am so we need to use calculate the IX here because we also know all the values here so we can now substitute the value because this is 0 0.7 this is 0 0.7 this is 60 this is also 60 and beta is 150 so everything is given and we can now see that this expression in complete form is 0 0.9885 so it is not one so there's not one-to-one -one, uh, copy. So there's some error here. And if now calculate the IX, that means IX is then equal to 0 0.9885 times IM. We have determined IM. Now we can calculate now that this is 1.992 milliamps. Now, since we know that the Q1 and Q2 are matched, that's shown here, they are based, uh, biased also at the same potential because there's bias there, same potential also there. That means that GM1 of Q1 and GM2 of the Q2, that means the transconductions, are equal to each other. Uh, we now define just GM because that differential pair will determine the voltage gain later on. We can now calculate that and then the expression for the GM is IC over VT and IC1 specifically or IC2, that doesn't matter. Divided by the thermal voltage will give you the transconductance for our differential pair which will create the current, uh, the gain. So let's move on and then also designate the emitter current for the Q1 and also the emitter current for the Q2. In the symmetry of the device, the emitter current of the Q1 and the emitter of the current of the Q2 will be exactly 50% of the tail current. So we get here 50% of this one 
and here also 50%. So it is divided in exact two pieces. Now the IC1 will be given by this expression because it's related to IE1 by this expression since we also have some base curves, not zero. Now when you now also know that IE1 is IX over 2 and IX we know, we can now calculate that directly by substituting also the betas, you get 0 0.9829 milliamp. So we go actually, it's not splitting exactly into, so we go to this value for IC1. Now we have now the necessary information for our GM. So GM will be then this current IC1 over the 0 0.026, so it's 26 millivolts for a thermal voltage at room temperature, and you have this transconduction value. Okay, now we have the necessary information. Let's summarize the values here. The GM is one of the important parameters we will use uh, in the next steps because the balance differential mode voltage gain is given by this expression, which is then the differential mode output voltage divided by the differential mode input voltage. And differential mode input voltage is between these two nodes, so the base of the Q1 and the base of the Q2. Divided by this, so that will be then minus GM times RC. You can look at the small signal model and then also verify this for yourself. This is the expression. And when you now also substitute the GM, we have determined, and also the 10 kilo ohms for RC, you get now here minus 378. Now the balance common mode voltage gain is given by this expression in the, in the single ended version. So I will come back to the balance format, which is the VO1 over the common mode input. Now the common mode input voltage will be then common mode. So that means it is common to both inputs. So you apply here and there at the basis of the Q1 and Q2, the same vo uh, voltage. And then you get this expression. And here you see the RO. I also come back to that later. This is a single ended output. But what is RO? Let me first discuss about that. The RO is looking actually in the collector down of Q5. So you go down and you look at the collector of the uh, Q5 and you determine the resistance. Now after some analysis, again I leave the details out, that is given by this expression which is then a beta of the Q5 times the dynamic output resistance of the Q5 divided by 2. Now we need to know what RO5 is because the beta is 150. So that is really due to the early voltage and we know what early voltage of the Q5 is, which is 60. Now that means RO is equal to early voltage over the collector current, which is IX. So that means this is what you have in, in, in the general expression. So the early voltage divided by the collector voltage. And that means over IX in this case, so 60 over 1.992 milliamps. That give, will give you 30.12 kilo ohms. Okay. Now we have the necessary information and we can go on here and then also calculate the RO that will give you approximately 2.26 mega ohms. So it's quite high. And that is one of the reasons for using a Wilson current source instead of simple resistor or simple current mirror because you increase now your upward resistance here or output impedance and that will create a lower common mode gain and also a higher common mode rejection ratio which is beneficial. Now let's continue and then move on from this single end to balance. And you see actually the single end and the balance are equal to each other because the VO1 and the VO2 are exactly equal to each other because you apply the same voltage at the basis of the Q1 and Q2. And that will be then defined as the output common mode voltage. Now we know this expression. We also know this the RO as the capital letter RO, which is the output resistance seen at this node. Now we can just substitute now everything here. Now we have now this expression, you see this value is quite small compared to the previous three examples with this differential pairs using BGDs. So it is now minus 0 0.00221, so almost zero actually. Okay, now moving on to the next question, which is question C about the balance common mode rejection ratio. That is given by this expression, again looking at the differential mode voltage gain divided by the common mode voltage gain, everything in balance. Just a ratio, you divide by the, the two values, you get here 171 times 10 to the power 3. And if you convert that to dBs, just 20 log of that value, you get now almost 105 dB, which is quite high. So you see the really the difference, the improvement compared to the other current source realizations here. Okay, let's bring now the information and then move on to the simulation result for the DC analysis. This part is the left side is for the differential mode. 
On the right side is for the common mode, which recognizes actually the following that the IM is 2.070 milliamps. We had 2.050 milliamps, so perfectly fine. You see here the tail current IX is 2 milliamps, so we have 1.992 milliamps, also very close, still some error. And because of this error, you also see some error in the IC1 and IC2. They're exactly equal to each other, IC1 and IC2. That actually is a proof that this current is split in exact two pieces. So you get here 0 0.992 or 993 milliamps. We get here 0 0.9829 milliamps. So again, some error. But what you also see is that the values here for the differential mode, DC analysis, is the exact same for the common mode. So that's not changed. Okay, so this is perfectly fine. We have verified our DC calculations. Let's move on and look at the simulation result for the AC analysis, and that is the body plot or frequency response. This is for the differential mode as a way, and we have here the low frequency gain. You see here 51.5 dB, and when you convert at the scalar value, it will be then 376. But we have calculated an absolute value, 370. Eight, which is quite fine but just a small error here and that is also verified so we can say this is fine moving on to the part with the common mode part so that now the circuit has changed we go now to the common mode this is the body plot for the common mode you see here the low frequency gain is minus 55.3 approximately dbs and when you convert that in a scalar form again we're using this formula 10 to the power minus the dbs divided by 20 in the exponent you will get now 0 0.0017 approximately, which is also close to 0 0.00221. Again, some error, but very close. So we can say this is also good enough uh, compared to the calculations. Now, moving on to the final form, which is our transfer response, because the frequency response will give you some information about how the gain uh, propagates as a function of frequency but transfer response is very important this is for the differential mode you see here now in time domain what's happening you see there the collector current of q1 collector current of q2 the reference current the tail current everything is actually shown here let's first focus on the differential mode of input voltage which is uh, this 10 millivolts peak pure sine wave of one kilohertz and you see the red one which is our differential mode output voltage which is inverted that's the red one and also it is a larger value so how much is the gain now the peak peak value we can calculate here which is 3.716 minus minus 3.716 that is this peak peak value divided by 0 0.02 volts peak peak and that will give you minus 372 which is again close to what we have calculated so we can say this is perfectly fine now final one is the common mode operation again the correct occurrence the tail current and the i mean the current tail current and also the common mode input voltage in this case common mode input voltage is, has increased all the way to 5 volts just to reflect the change because if you work with common mode the gain is quite small you already see that so if you work it also with 10 millivolts you don't see much in the result or it's not really accurate so I go high uh, let's say 5 or 10 volts depending on what is possible in the circuit also in the linear region and I look at one of the outputs which also see is the VO1 and VO2 are exact same. See, they are exact same. They are in phase. Again, it is inverted, so that's why we have this minus sign. But we see here that the 10 volts peak peak here for the input will actually give you just 0 0.017 volts peak peak. So if you do the peak one, the maximum minus the minimum, you get actually 0 0.017 volts peak peak. That will give you minus 0 0.0017 as the gain for the common mode. Okay, now. When you look at the value here, again, that is close to what we have calculated, so we can say this is perfectly fine. Okay, this was our example about the BGT differential pair using the Wilson current source as our tail current. We have seen that using this current source, we have increased our common mode reaction ratio by decreasing the common mode voltage gain drastically. It's actually shown in sort of the difference between these two or the factor or the ratio is quite high, which is here given 171 times 10 to power 3, which is 105 dB. If you have any questions or comments about this example, please let me know. I will try to answer them as soon as possible. In the coming examples, I will try to discuss more advanced versions of the current source and also look at the MOSFET variation of the differential pair analysis. 
So stay tuned and see you next time in another video.